This is Nick with logosbynick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can design this logo using GIMP. And in order to follow along with this tutorial, you'll need the font that I used for this design here. It's called Matilda. I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. It's a free font, so go ahead and download and install that before launching GIMP, and then we'll be good to get started. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here with GIMP. As you can see, this is the design we're going to be creating. Now, I generally don't recommend creating logos with raster graphic applications applications like GIMP and Photoshop. A logo should really be made with vectors using a vector graphics application like Inkscape or Illustrator. However, if GIMP is what you're most comfortable with and you just need a basic logo that you're going to use maybe just on the web or on a website or something like that or for your applications, you can get away with using GIMP to make your logo as long as you make it at like a really large size. So I'd recommend making it at at least 1920 by 1920 pixels, but the larger the better. So uh, because, you know, from there you could always scale it down to your needed size. It's harder to scale it up than it is to scale it down. So uh, I think 1920 by 1920 is a good starting point. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new document here. I'm going to set this to be 1920 by 1920 pixels. Uh, I'm going to set the, um, uh, what are we looking for here? The fill width transparency and go ahead and click OK. And let me hold control and roll down the mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit. So what we want to do first is put some guides on the page going down the center horizontally and vertically. So I'm going to go to image, or actually, yeah, image, guides, new guide by percent. And I'm going to use uh, vertical position 50%. That should be there by default. Go ahead and click OK. Then we'll do the same thing again. Image, guides, new guide by percent. And we want this one to be horizontal. Go ahead and click OK. And now we want to go to view. We want to make sure, let me go back, we'll go to view. We want to make sure um, snap to guides is checked, that's enabled. And we want to snap to canvas edges as well. So go ahead and click that. And up here, by default, we're going to have black as the foreground color and white as the background color. I'm going to keep that, but I'm just going to change the black to like, a, like an off shade of black, maybe like a very, very dark gray. I like to use 1A, 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 uh, which is the HTML notation. Go ahead and click OK. And that's going to be kind of like if you look at this, it's kind of like it's not exactly black. It's like a it's almost like a like a dull dark gray. I just like that shade, so um, we'll use that. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab the circles tool, uh, actually the ellipse select tool, and I'm going to bring the cursor towards the center of the page here, and then just click and drag to create to start creating a circle. Then hold Control and Shift, and it's going to create a perfectly symmetrical round circle coming from the inside to the outside of the edge of the page. And once it gets to the border of the page right there, just go ahead and snap it like that. Let it snap. And then go to Edit, Fill with Background Color. And now we can go to Select, None. And now we have the outer white backdrop like that. Okay, so simple enough. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to uh, click this button right here that says Create a New Layer and Edit to the Image. Uh, we're going to use Transparency. Go ahead and click OK. And again, we're going to do the same thing, but just make the circle a little smaller. Just click and drag, hold Control and Shift. And I'm going to make this maybe, uh, like I said, a little smaller, maybe about that big. And this time we'll go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color. And then we can go to Select, None. And now we're going to create another layer on top of that. Again, a transparent layer. We're going to create this little white circle going around the inside edge here. Again, snapping to the center of the page here. Click and drag, and then hold Control and Shift. And I'm going to bring this one out maybe about that far. And what I want to do now is I want to I want to swap around the foreground and the background color. So I'll just click these little arrows right here to swap that around. And then I'll go to Edit. Um, where is it? Stroke Selection. And for the stroke width, I'm going to use a solid color, anti-aliasing turned on. Line width right here. Change that to 25. Assuming you made your page 1920 by 1920 like I did. If so, use 25. Go ahead and click OK and see how that looks. That's pretty good. It put a little circle outline there. And now we can go to Select, None. And now what we're going to do is going to be a little more tricky. We're going to create these little tabs right here with the stars on them. So in order to do that, I want to create a new layer. Go ahead and click OK. And I want to grab the uh, the rectangle select tool and then just click and drag up here 
to put a little rectangle up there like that. Right above the top of that circle there. It doesn't have to be exactly on the center of the page or any specific size or width or whatever. Just an estimate like that. That's pretty good. And once we've done that, I'm going to turn off the visibility of these bottom three layers down here. So we're just going to be working with this top one up here that we just created. And uh, I'm going to go to Edit, Fill with Background Color to make that that black shade. And let me zoom in on that a little bit by holding Control and rolling up the mouse wheel. And what I want to do is let's go to Select None and let's go to Layer, uh, Auto Crop Layer. And that's going to make the layer the same size of that object there. And I'm going to grab the Alignment tool uh, right here. And where it says Relative To, I want to select Image. And then click on that object right there and just center it up on the, uh, on the vertical axis right there like that. If you notice, you can change the position on the page. I want it in the center like that. And once that's done, let's grab the uh, Rectangle Select tool. I'm going to create a new layer on top of that. Transparency again. Let me zoom out a little bit. Um, I'm going to snap the cursor to the top left corner of the page and then click and drag and snap it to the center of the page to create a rectangle or a square rather right there. And then I'll go to edit, fill with foreground color. And what I'll do now is I'll go to select none. I'm going to grab the move tool and I'm just going to bring this towards the center of the page. I want to take the opacity of this and bring this down to about in half. It doesn't have to be exactly in half, just a rough estimate like that. And then I'm going to grab the rotation tool, the rotate tool right there. Keyboard shortcut for that is uh, shift R. And I just want to rotate this around and I want to hold control to lock it onto certain degrees. I want to rotate it around until the corners are going perfectly horizontal and vertical like that. And then go ahead and uh, finalize that. I think the angle says 45 degrees. Go ahead and click rotate. Let me grab the Move tool and bring this towards the center of the page. And what we want to do with this layer, again, we want to go to Layer, Auto Crop Layer. And now I want to grab the um, Scale tool, click on the object, and you might want to bring down the opacity of the image preview right here. I have mine set down to like 45. Let me move this out of the way. And I want to take this center node right here in the bottom and just bring that up like that, maybe about that far, and go ahead and click Scale. And I'm going to grab the Move tool. I'm just going to position this at the center of the page. It should snap onto the guide there. Let me zoom in on this area right here by holding Control and rolling up the mouse wheel. I want to snap this to the center of the page and bring this up to right here so that this white area is intersecting with the black tab right there. And if you see where I'm going with this, if you notice the shape of this tab right here, I'm using this as a reference point to cut up, kind of like to uh, punch a hole through this object here. So once I've done that, let me right click that layer and go to Alpha to Selection and that selects it all. And then I can go ahead and delete that layer. And with this layer selected, I'll, uh, I'll just press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. Or if you're using Mac, you can go to Edit, Clear. And once that's done, we can go to Select, None. And let me zoom out a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the visibility of these other layers back on. And I want to take this top layer here and I want to duplicate that. Create a duplicate of the layer. And I want to go to Edit, or you know what? I'll right click that. I'll go to Alpha to Selection. I'll go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color to make that white. And then I'll go to Select, None. And then I'll go to Layer, Layer to Image Size to make that big again. And what I'll do next is I'll grab the Scaling tool Turn the opacity of that down a little bit, and I'll click on this white object right here. And I'm just going to grab one of these corners and start scaling it up. I'm going to hold Control so it scales proportionately and go ahead and click Scale. I'm going to take this and put this at the center of the page. I'm going to take this layer with the Move tool, that is. I'm going to take this layer and bring, click and drag that down beneath the black layer right there. And I'll bring the opacity of that all the way back up. And you'll see what we did here. We created kind of like a white outline for this tab. So uh, I'm just going to uh, change the width of this down here by just clicking and dragging up and holding Control on the keyboard so it locks it onto the vertical axis like that. So maybe about that far is pretty good, just like that. And uh, the final step for this little tab here would be to create a little star. So to do that, I'll grab the brush tool 
And uh, for the brush, there should be um, like a little star brush with uh, that comes default in your GIMP installation. And I want to make the size of this 120. And then again, I'll just snap this over here to the center guide and I'll just, uh, actually, you know what? Let's click on this top layer and put a new layer on here first. Transparency, and then we'll put this onto the new layer, just like that. And what I want to do now is right click that layer and go to merge down and then right click that layer and go to merge down. So everything on that little tab should be on its own dedicated layer now. And once that's done, I want to go to layer uh, layer to image size. Let me zoom out a little bit. And I want to put another one down here as well. So, but in start of, uh, I mean, instead of creating it all over again, we could just duplicate it and flip it vertically. So I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to create a duplicate of it. And I'll grab the, uh, the, uh, the flip tool, choose vertical from this selection right here, and then just go ahead and click on that and it should flip it vertically. Uh, vertically and now you can right click that top layer and go to merge down so that both of those little tabs there are on their own dedicated layer and the final step for this segment right here would be to cut out this area that's protruding outside of the circle because if you notice on the original logo it's confined within the circle there so in order to do that uh, let me zoom out what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on our original layer down here this white circle the background layer and I'll right click that and go to alpha to selection. So it creates a selection going around that circle. And then I'll go to select, invert. And then I'll click on this layer up here and then just press delete on the keyboard. Or if you're using Mac, like I said, just go to edit clear then select none. If we zoom in, we see it got rid of that area that was protruding out from the circle. So that pretty much does it for the logo portion of the design. Now we just have to add our text. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these page guides. I'm going to go to view where it says show guides. We can turn that off. That'll just get in our way um, moving forward. And I'll grab the text tool. And like I mentioned at the beginning, the font I'm using, you can choose it from this drop down right here. It's called Matilda. The size I'm using is 846. You might want to use a smaller font if the, if the word you're using has more letters or a bigger size if it's using less letters. But I'm just using this right here. Go ahead and click on the canvas and I'm just going to write for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to write logo. And again, you could change the size over here. If you're using more letters, you might want to shrink it down. Or if you're just using like three letters or something, you might want to make it bigger. But I'm just going to leave that as it is. I'll grab the move tool and I'm just going to, oops, grab the wrong thing. Grab the move tool and just put the text towards the center of the page like that. And there you pretty much have it. You have your logo created with GIMP. Now, if you want to save this, you can go back and edit it further, uh, you know, down the road. You can go to File, Save As, and save it as a .xcf file, which is a native GIMP file. And if you're done with it, if you'd like to use this logo with a transparent background, you could just go to File, Export, and choose .png, export it as a .png with uh, alpha channels with a, with a transparent, uh, transparent background like that. And that should pretty much do it for this tutorial. That's how you can create... Uh, this simple logo design using GIMP. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.